The chapter I'm going to take up today is for the students of class 12 from the book of geography, India, People and Economy. The name of the chapter is Human Development. So dear students, the question arises that what do we mean by the word development? And what is the aim of development? The primary aim of development is the well-being of the people, which means the development in all the three spheres, that is economic, social and cultural spheres. The United Nations Development Program, that is UNDP, published its first human development report in 1990, in which the human development was defined as the process of enlarging people's choices. So children, here the question arises that what do we understand by the choices of the people? And all the choices of the people, they are dependent upon the freedom they get to fulfill those choices. And the freedom is attached with the economic uh, finances of the people. The most important element of human development are, number one, long and healthy life, their proper education, and the decent standard of living of the people. So here we say that these are the elements of development. Human development is a process of widening people's choices. As earlier we have done, that UNDP also has given the statement for the human development that is broadening the choices of the people. So it's not only the broadening the choices of the people, but raising the level of their well-being also. Remember children that development must be human oriented and development must be woven around the people and not the people around the development. Now, there are two terms which we generally use. One is growth, another is development. Now, we must understand that how these two terminologies, they differ from each other. When we take up growth, growth means it is concerned with the increase in income because without the increase in income, the growth cannot take place. And development, it embraces the widening of all the aspects of human life. All the aspects means economic, social, cultural, and political. Growth is essential for the human development. It is the use of income. So children, as we have just done, that growth is related with the economic resources of the person. So that means it is a use of income and not the income itself, which is decisive in expanding the human choices. As we always know that more the income we have, more the choices or more the demands we have to fulfill. So that means the growth is related with the amount of money we have in our pocket. The real wealth of the country is its people and the main aim of human development should be the enrichment of human life and not simply the economic growth. Because when we talk about the population of uh, any country, that means the two things come to our mind. One, the number of people, another, their quality. So that means when we talk about the human development, it is the enrichment of the human life. So it's not only the economic growth, but the enrichment of the human life. So when we talk about the enrichment, that means we talk about the development of the human beings and their quality. We generally say that development is freedom. Now what do we mean by this phrase that development is freedom? Development and freedom both are associated with one, modernization, number two, 
leisure. Number three, the comfort of the people. And number four, the affluence of the people. So that means if we have all these facilities, so that means we have been given the freedom. And if we have been given the freedom, that means we have all the chances to develop. And the level of development is measured with respect to the availability and access to these modern things. So that means how easily and how frequently we have access to all these things which are related to the freedom. And once we have the freedom, so that means we have all the chances of development. In India, development is a mixture of opportunities. Mind children, I said it's a mixture of opportunities. So that means we always talk about the opportunities along with the neglect and what they are deprived of. Few people living in urban areas are enjoying all the facilities of modern life, whereas the vast people, humanity, living in the rural areas and the urban slums do not have even the basic amenities of life. So when we compare the two sets of the people living in the urban areas with all the facilities and living in the rural areas or the slums of the urban areas, we find that there's a lot of difference between the availability of resources, what they are, they have. Or we can say that few people, they are deprived of the facilities which they have to have in their life. Lack of development leads to two things. One, deteriorating the human conditions. And number two, environmental pollution. Poor are being subjected to three interrelated processes of declining capabilities. So when I say declining capabilities, so dear students, it is that they are deprived of the certain facilities of life. One, that is social capabilities. This is due to the displacement and weakening social ties. Number two, environmental capabilities, that is the areas in which they live in. So that means we talk about the polluted parts of the country where they live. Thirdly, this is the personal capabilities of the people. Due to increasing incidence of diseases and accidents, though we have all the medical facilities which are being given to the people in India, with the result, the death rate is reducing these days. But still, we have quite a big number of the people who are deprived of these personal capabilities of life. Now, we talk about the indicators of human development. How can we say that the country or a state or a person is developed? UNDP, that is United Nations Development Program, has developed a composite index, which is known as HDI, which stands for Human Development Index. That index includes three things. One, longevity of the life. Number two, knowledge base. Number three, decent material for standard of living. Now, when we talk about these three indicators of human development, there's certain index for each indicator. Like first indicator we talked about, that is how long a person can live. So that means the index for that is the life expectancy. Now what is life expectancy? This is on an average, the person can live for how long that is known as life expectancy. The second is we talked about the indicator of human development that is the education base. So that means 
The index for that education base is the adult literacy. That how much is the person literate? Or for a country we talk about that what percentage of the population of the country is literate. Thirdly, we talked about the indicator that is the standard of living of the people or the decent style of living of the people. For that, the index is per capita gross national product. So that means all the indicators of human development, they are based on certain index. The other variables for the human development index are the one healthy indicators related to the long life of the people. So what are the healthy indicators? We talk about birth rate, death rate, infant mortality, nutrition and the life expectancy at birth. So these are the other variables which are related with the health indicators. Now we take up the social indicators and these indicators include literacy, particularly the female literacy. Number two, enrollment of school going children. Because in our India, in our country, we always discuss about the dropouts. Because many children, they go to school, they seek the admission, but then they drop out because of the certain reasons, maybe the family background, maybe the economic crisis, or certain other reasons resulting into the dropout of the students. So this dropout is also one of the social indicators. And fourth, we talk about the pupil-teacher ratio. Because in our country, the population is too much. We always say that India is the second largest country in the world as far as the population number is concerned. So we take up the rural areas, the ratio is very poor because hardly any child likes to go to school because of the deficiency of the infrastructure of the schools in the rural areas. And just opposite to that, in the urban schools, if we find that the classrooms are overcrowded, so this pupil-teacher ratio is also one of the indicators of human development. And lastly, we'll check up the economic indicators, which include the wages, the income of the people, and the employment of the people. So if you just look up all these three indicators, which are the economic indicators, they are all interrelated because employment will lead to the income and income or we talk about the wages, the people who are employed on the daily wages or on the daily basis. So that means they don't have the income, they have the wages. So children, today we have just discussed about the human development, the definition of the human development and human development indicators and what are the different other indicators which result to the human development in the various spheres of life? Thank you.